Let's get out to Campbell Brown. Angus Brayshaw just won the AFLX Grand Final. But for a game that was uh, sold as being bruise free and open, you boys had a red hot crack in that last half. Yeah, well, I mean, we talk a lot about the Melbourne person and what that looks like, and it's every day, no matter what it is, it's been super competitive and whatever it is, it could be. Geno said it could be backgammon, it could be whatever. But we come out, we compete. And, you know, it's obviously, we like to see this transfer through the real season, but it's a good start. And the boys got a good play out, it's all good. The, uh, the club copped a little bit of criticism throughout the pre season about the camp and a, about a, a few things that uh, didn't occur. Pretty good answer tonight for the fans. Well, I mean, you know, whatever was said was said, but we're pretty confident about what we're doing inside the club. And um, uh, if we keep performing, I mean, it's obviously FLX, but tough, competitive, hard, contested style of footy then. You know, the, the rest will take care of itself. We'll write our own headlines by the way we play, so it's going to be good. And on a personal note, yourself, you've had plenty of concussions and head knocks over the last couple of years. You're looking fit. You're out there tonight. Uh, how's everything going physically? Yeah, great. I mean, I still wear this because mum, mum uh, would have a heart attack if I didn't, but I feel great. And you know, I had a full pre-season. I've not missed a session, so I'm feeling really good. And we keep playing like this, and I'm just, I can't wait to be involved. And it's going to be a great season, I think, for us. Congrats. Yeah, cheers, man. Congratulations to Melbourne. They win AFLX Night 2 by 10 points. And this will be their first piece of silverware since the 1989 pre-season comp route. Why are you laughing, Tom? <laughs> That's a long time. Why are you laughing, I'm not mate? too sure. It'll, it'll probably take pride of place in their, in their trophy cabinet, you think? Well, I just think it's a sign of things to come for the Ds this year. We know they've had a bit of a tumultuous pre-season. We talk about their pre-season camp, and this just shows that you know they're on the right track, the Ds. We know they've recruited really strongly over a period where they've been down towards the bottom of the ladder, and you just feel like now they're starting to climb their way up and expecting big things from them for the rest of the year. I think they play a really strong brand of football. They're really competitive and tough around around the ball, and they're now starting to get some good outside run and release. Yeah, they do. They've got a lot of class in their side, which has been the thing that's been lacking the past few, past few years. But when you're able to draft players like Petrarca and Brayshaw and, and bring a Jake Lever into your team, you know that, that speaks to the volume of, of class that they've got in their list. Yeah, there were some big highlights to come out of uh, this grand final as well. Hawthorne were able to fight their way back in to the contest. They had a couple of opportunities late to, to take the win. Melbourne did get away early though, but as we've seen in the AFLX competition, some goals over the back and some big super goals. It's uh, been the highlights. Yeah, it has, and it's, it's sort of like when you watch the NBA, there's two minutes to go that put, there might be ten points of difference. Anything can happen. This is really similar. The super goal adds a whole different element to the game. You look up and it's 12 points of odds, it's a couple of kicks, but it can change just like that, which I think keeps the fans really engaged. And they were certainly in it right up until that last play at the end of the game. Yeah, it was a big tackle there from Angus Brayshaw, and we saw a bit of a scuffle going on between Neville Jetta and Blake Hardwick as well, which the crowd really loved. The crowd enjoyed the scuffle. I'm not, the, I'm not sure the boys come Tuesday when the MRP finds them for wrestling, whether they'll be all that too happy with getting a getting a fine in the AFLX, Jono. No, I think uh, Michael Christian will certainly look after them. When He's got to take that. it into consideration, doesn't he? Yeah, well, here we go. The presentation's uh, underway here. And uh, Neville Jetta as the captain of Melbourne for tonight's grand final. He goes and accepts the trophy for Melbourne. The big X goes into their trophy cabinet. It's better than nothing, yep. absolutely. You come here tonight and you're not too sure what to expect, but to walk away having one or three of your games, Melbourne will be really happy. Yeah, they will. I think all sides will be very happy with the way they've, they've performed tonight. Even for Hawthorne, some of their younger players, I think, stood up. Even to see James Warple go get out there today and he took a couple of uh, good marks, had a couple of nice shots at goal as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen four top ten draft picks blooded tonight. We've seen a lot of young players get up opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't get, which I think speaks volumes about the concept. It's a concept that I think will, will last the journey given that the players have embraced it. Yeah, that's right. And look, when you when you look about uh, throughout the uh, results to, tonight, Essendon, I thought, were, were quite good. There's a there's a fair bit going on with them. What about your boys, the Saints? How'd they go? Yeah, I thought they performed really strongly. Definitely a shift in the way that they were playing with the way they defended. Real strong one-on-one -on -one performance and, and their ball movement looked good. So they fielded a pretty strong team and the, you know, about, about half of those guys you'd expect to play regular senior footy. Yeah, definitely. Look, we're just going to wait for uh, Jake Melsham, who's making his way over. and look forward to having a chat to, to him very shortly. Here's what we're talking about. The big stink. There it is. The big, the big wrestle between the two boys. Well, the crowd got up. We could see near us 
They were all standing up trying to get a better view, but I'm not sure. I reckon this is borderline. <laughs> borderline. The players, we know there's no prize money. We know the players didn't get necessarily paid for AFLX, but hopefully they don't land a fine. We've got who we consider the, uh, the the player of the night, Jake Melksham, with us. Jake, what a great performance. Four Zuba goals. I think your first three kicks in the concept were all Zuba goals. So you've got to be happy with your performance tonight. Yeah, it was good fun out there. I think um, the aim of the game is to kick those 10 pointers. It's, it's only, I reckon, 35. They say it's 40, but I reckon it's 35. So, yeah, we had good fun. What do you take away from tonight, then, in terms of your, your preparations leading into the season? I think it was just good to get that blowout. Um, when you play that first game, as you know, the first 10 minutes, you're absolutely cooked. So I think we got that tonight. And then going into um, Hobart next week against North, um, we'll feel much better in that first quarter. And um, what about the actual concept? Were, were boys putting their hands up to play, or was it a matter of who's done the most work in the pre-season? Uh, I think it was just let all the A-graders sit at home and, and rest up for the good stuff, and we'll fill in the void. No, it was, it was suited more to the guys that we think could play the game well and also to Bloods and Young. And what about the blokes that didn't play tonight? What will they be doing this weekend? Uh, they've got a big day tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so probably probably yeah. not a bad yeah. one to... Great decision yeah. to, uh, yeah. to put your hand up and, and play. And it was great to see Christian Petrarca. Obviously, you know, looks like he's going to take his game to another level. And, and Angus Brayshaw, we spoke about him a fair bit, but getting back out, looks like uh, you know he's right to go as well. Yeah, both those guys have had really good summers. Um, particularly Gussie, it's good to get him out on the park and play with some confidence because that'll be uh, getting him ready for round one and, and for the rest of the year. Disappointing end to last year. We know that. We know how close you were to actually playing finals. Has that been spoken about uh, as a group in, in the lead-up to this year? We spoke about it day one with Goody. He brought it up and then um, we knocked it on the head there and we, we just looked forward to what was to come this year and we didn't speak about it again. So it hurt for two or three months there and it still hurts now, but um, we've moved on and ready to go. How has Jake Lever settled into the uh, Melbourne life? Yeah, he loves it. Um, he's a very, very mature young man, Jake. You'd think he's about 30 years old, the way he is um, around the club and the way he plays the game, and he's been really beneficial to our back line so far this summer, just with training, professionalism, and doing everything he needs to do. And what about your own game, mate? Where, where do you see yourself fitting in this year? You've been, been a bit of a Mr Fix-It, being able to play all over the ground. What, what's your pre-season role been? It's been through the forward line the whole time. Um, that's where I played the last 10 games last year, and, um, yeah, I've played there tonight and had a few pings at goals and I think that's the, where it comes naturally to me, playing in front of goals and um, the attacking side of the game is always fun so I think I'll be there most of the year. Well Jake, we appreciate your time post game. Congratulations on, on the you. win tonight but more importantly good luck for the season ahead. Thanks fellas, cheers. What well yeah, I think Melbourne are in for a very big year, don't worry about that. It was a great night here, night two. We now turn our attention to tomorrow night. We head to Allianz Stadium in Sydney and there's the line up there. You've got GWS taking on the Tigers, Sydney and the Western Bulldogs. Tigers go again against the Brisbane Lions. Yeah, what, I, what I'm most looking forward to, Jono, is, is seeing the way the Tigers come out. Well, we see they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to have a lot of pressure on them pushing up into, uh, into the start of the season to, to really repeat last year's performance. But it'll be interesting to see how they go about it tomorrow night. Two out of two. No injuries, Jono. So praying for three yeah. out of three. Nothing supports a new concept like the players getting through unscathed. So let's hope we can tick it off again tomorrow night. Night one was a l uncontested. Night two was a little bit more contested, a bit more football-like. It, it was an absolute pleasure to watch. So we wait for night three to see how that unfolds with six more teams to go. But it was a fantastic night here at Etihad Stadium. The kids loved it. The setup was fantastic. And all the players and teams acquitted themselves extremely well. They'll walk away knowing that their preparations are on track for season 2018. Good night, everyone.